There are times you fancy something but don't want to spend a fortune. There are times you don't want to keep up with the Joneses. Simply want something that is fully functional but doesn't necessarily come with the right label attached. Maybe today's review is going to be the bullpup you're looking for. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. This week we'll be looking at the Artemis P12 bullpup from the guys at SMK. This is the budget end of the bullpup market, but is it the bargain you would hope or is it an avoid at all costs? I suppose cost is the best place to start from and this being a single shot version, the P12, retails at £399 UK. Yeah, that's right, a bullpup PCP for £399. Now you could go the whole hog if you like and have the P10 version, which is multi-shot and pay an extra £100 because that version retails at £499 UK, which is still a bargain basement price for a PCP bullpup. To start with, I'm somewhat confused by the P12 and P10 branding. I understand calling the P10 the P10 because it has a 10 round magazine, but surely the P12 should have been called the P1 if it's single shot. Still, there are certain mysteries of the universe that will remain mysteries, and in the scheme of things, it probably isn't worth the brain time. So, Walk around then. First, as usual, looking at this, first impressions are that it is quite a respectable looking gun. Nice beach stock, nicely proportioned, good length, etc. The overall length being about 78 centimetres, which is 31 inches. The barrel length is 66 centimetres or 26 inches, which is quite a length for a bullpup and should hopefully translate into decent accuracy, which we will check later. It is also pretty lightweight at eight and a half pounds, unscoped, which is 3.85 kilograms. And as you would expect from a bullpup, carries that weight nicely in the shoulder and close to the body, rather than hanging out front. So, Let's get closer. From the front, the first thing you to point out is the shrouded barrel. Now this is quite a nicely balanced looking thing, but no standard thread on the end. So you're not going to be able to fit a silencer. Well, not easily. But it is actually pretty quiet without any additional silencer anyway. No loud bark here. It's more internal noise than from the barrel. Under the barrel is the air cylinder, which again is quite a length and should be good for a reasonable shot count. On the end of this is the air gauge. Again, as with most of these bullpups, you find yourself looking down the business end when checking the remaining air. Not always a good idea to my mind, but they're not on their own with that. Staying on the upper part of the gun, you realise the barrel and air cylinder are pretty much the full length of the gun. The thing to bear in mind is that this is basically a rifle turned into a bullpup, which is naturally going to help keep the cost down in the R&D, because they don't need to spend a fortune doing the research and development. So, if it works, and the savings are passed on to the customer, who cares? There is a raised top weaver rail for scope on the top. Again, it's simple and effective and not overly fancy. Turning to the bottom of the gun, we find a single piece wooden stock. And I would assume from its color that it's beech. 
It is really nice. It has a quality feel. It's got no rough edges or splits or rough cutouts, which can often be the case on ultra budget guns. It is surprisingly ergonomically shaped. With its thumb hole stock style, it incorporates the trigger guard and is very, very comfortable to hold. There is no stippling, as is often found on this type, but I didn't find that that was a problem at all when I was using it. It has a rubberized book pad, and they have taken a very sensible approach and added a similar pad to the base of the grip to stop any damage from knocks and bangs. That's a good idea. The trigger whilst it's definitely not a match trigger, is not bad at all. No real complaints from me there. It has a pull weight of about one and three quarter pounds straight out the box and was good enough to get some very pleasing results. The safety is also included in the trigger area and is a push forward pull back item, similar to the ones used in Gamo and BSA type. And some may like them and some may not, but it is perfectly functional and does exactly what it's supposed to do. It locks the trigger. Okay, so far so good. What about that action? Where you've converted a rifle into a bullpup does have its potential issues. You see, the cocking lever is set quite a way back, in fact, all the way back, and cocking it whilst holding on target is pretty much impossible. You need to lower the gun to cock it and then return back to put it on target. After saying that, this is the single shot version, so you're gonna to have to lower it anyway. So on this version, it is pretty much irrelevant. Loading the pellet is a simple drop into the breech and close back up method. And it's about as simple as it gets. Power then, out with the chrono to find out what the figures are like. Using 0.22 caliber, 15.89 grain JSBs saw a maximum of 573 feet per second which is a respectable 11.59 foot-pounds or 15.71 joules. So it's spot on for the UK restricted power figures, really. The really nice thing was the spread, which was only six feet per second from a budget, non-regulated rifle converted to a bullpup. I think that's excellent. This is, as I've said, the 0.22 caliber version, but it is also available in 177 and 0.25 if you prefer. Right, let's have a look at the target results, shall we? Set out at 40 meters with just a few shots to set up the scope and then straight for it. I must stress that this isn't a £1,200 UK retail high-end PCP. This is a budget item, and I, for one, am more than happy with that, and it held its own on the Bottle Top Challenge as well. I must point out that I did actually get carried away with this one. I found myself settling down and simply enjoying an afternoon shooting after I'd done the filming and suddenly stopped and realised what I was doing. I was enjoying myself thoroughly. Yes, this has its shortcomings. The setback 
action, the lack of silence of fitting ability, single shot, which actually doesn't bother me. I love the Ed Gunn Leshy, which is a single shot. Yes, it is quite evident when you're shooting that there is no chin rest. And you're actually resting your chin on the metal of the breech. But this is less than a 400 quid PCP bullpup that is lightweight and fun. Personally, I love it. If SMK are watching and want to send me a 177P10 to try, I'd love to spend an afternoon grinning again. Thanks for watching.